for question six, um, I, I'm hoping there's people don't get distracted by, um, the history of this, because I've basically repurposed a question that was um, going to be about something else. And if you look in the written notes, um, we didn't talk about it in class, but there was a whole, there's a section in the written notes about um, whether or not, you know, understanding is necessary for privacy violations. So you can look at that and that will help you with some of this, but I really want to draw your attention to um, this part of it. This is the part that I kind of I'm changing around this this term because uh, I think this will make the question a little better. So, okay, let's talk about um, what's going on here. So the main uh, source setup is what used to be the um, the business model of Gmail, right? Um, you know, it was gonna give you ads based on what your emails say. Uh, people are. You know, there was worries about privacy, but the defenders of uh, Google at the time would say things like, well, but look, you know, no human being is ever knowing what ads you're getting, right? It's just a totally algorithmic process. Um, the advertisers just like, I just want to send fibromyalgia medicine ads to people with, you know, who may have fibromyalgia. Um, they don't care who they are and uh, in this kind of case. And so that's that's the setup. That's the sort of thing that we're imagining. So there's no human being in the loop except for you, the user. Um, and then, you know, we want to still figure out whether or not there's a potential for harm. So remember, one big thing you're going to need to do here is say something right up front about uh, what counts as a harm, right? I don't, you don't need to do the full detailed rundown, but you need to make clear that there has to be, you know, a setback of interest, um, and make sure that you're understanding this in terms of well-being, which, again, I'm understanding as, uh, you know, the sort of quality of uh, your week, right? So the idea was you have a setback of interest when something makes you worse off than you were or would have been, and that setback is the sort of thing that if you thought back over the quality of your week would kind of come up to you or it would make sense to bring up when somebody asks you how your week was. And then, you know, you have to have both of these. You have to have a rights violation, right? So what you're going to want to do um, is s explain the, um, the concept of harm, right? That's your, where's my sparkly pen? All right. Uh, oops, I already misused my sparkly pen. Ah. Sorry, I know that nobody cares about this consistency except for me, but whatever. Okay, so sparkly pen is for the the, num the things that you need to do. So if you're going to talk about harm, you need to say what it is, right? That's this. So that's number one. Okay. Now, what you want to do is you want to say, okay, the argument here would be that nobody could have their... Uh, interests set back substantially in the relevant way, or there could not be a rights violation um, if, you know, sort of only ads are involved, or sorry, only algorithms are involved, okay? So uh, there's different ways to do this, but I think the easiest way to do it, well, I shouldn't say that, um, I'll just, so I'll just tell you one way to do it, right, is to go, um, well, um, Let's see. Uh, you probably would say, you know, well, look, um, advertising on its own, you know, often isn't going to be the kind of thing that affects the quality of your week. So there's oftentimes not going to be a setback of interest. But, you know, you could still imagine cases in which there are, right? Um, things that are embarrassing, uh, ads which make people uh, nervous, right, about being followed around. And that actually might be something you want to keep in mind because you want to be thinking in terms of how you're going to cash out this rights violation. And remember, in class, we talked about three different ways of doing that. Um, one was the, well, there's, or sorry, four. So there's like sort of just ordinary rights, right? I always say right in that context. You know, 
these are just like cases where there's threats of, of harm to you, uh, your security of person, all that good stuff. Um, it might be a little hard to get that going with, um, since we're mainly talking about ads, but you might be able to do it. Totally up to you. Just want you to know that, you know, you're going to make sure that you're, you know, sort of tying the ordinary rights violations, you know, property rights, rights to safety, security, to ads, right? Okay. Um, then there's the privacy rights stuff. And there was, we talked about three versions of that, right? We talked about the liberal view, uh, which cares about non-interference. We talked about the Republican view, uh, which talks about um, sort of the absence of domination. And we talked about a relational view, uh, which talks about uh, which shifts the focus to the role privacy plays in maintaining um, uh, lots of different kinds of relationships, both personal, uh, family, uh, work, lots of other things. Uh, okay, so what you want to do is first try to, exp you know, say um, why it is that you know, and you, you don't want to do all four of these, right? You might mention all four and then just say, oh, and I'm going to focus on, you know, sort of, uh, say, the neo-Republican view, because that's the one that, you know, I think is going to be most plausible here, or the liberal view, you know, or the relational view. Just say there's four, maybe, so that's your paragraph, right? Each one gets like one sentence or two sentences, one sentence saying what it is, second sentence saying, giving an example, I don't know. Um, so that's a quick paragraph. And then you're like, but I'm going to focus on this one, right? So this is about non-interference. And then you'd say, okay, so the reason why there can't be interference or there's not going to be interference is, well, we're talking about advertising. Advertising doesn't actually interfere with people's lives and stuff like that, right? Um, so that could be your argument, right? So that could be this part where you're you're trying to explain, do, make the best case you can for this, that, you know, there's not going to be any problem uh, once you've sort of sorted out in this way. And then, you know, there, you would turn around and criticize it, right? So it's going to depend on, again, how exactly you do this and which of these uh, views you choose to work with. Um, you could actually, you know, maybe, I think it would be fair to say, well, you know, do the defense on the basis of the liberal view, you know, so do number two on the basis of the liberal view and say, look, there's not going to be any interference, blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, you could turn around and say, but look, you know, there's other views out there about liberty, um, views which care about, you know, not people not being in a position of domination or something like that. And maybe there's some way that on a Republican view, um, the ad stuff can, um, could work. Um, and it, it might happen, you know, because there's like, remember, this is always very sympathetic to the sort of self-censorship, you know, what you might call the chilling effects, right? So if people think that they're being watched because of the ads that they see, then they might not do stuff. And that, you know, is going to be exactly the kind of problem and rights violation that the Republicans going to be worried about. So one way to do it would be like, yeah, you're not going to get the problem here. But then, you know, when you turn around to do task number three, right? Um, when you turn around to do that, you know, you would go, oh, but look, on these other views, which are, you know, perfectly reasonable views, um, you're going to get some serious problems. So the, basically the argument is um, the defender of this only has a ground for their defense if they pick one of these. But, um, you know, there are other views out there. And then you would explain why it doesn't work as well on these other views. Um, again, don't know if that's the way that's, I don't know if that's the way you want to do it. Uh, a lot of different ways you can do it. Uh, totally up to you. Um, but what I am looking for, like sort of absolutely positively, is that you are... Um, making sure that you set out the argument in terms of harm and in terms of this concept of harm, not just the idea of people being hurt, but, you know, uh, setback of the quality of your week where you have a right not to have that setback occur and that right's going to be grounded in one of these ways. And then as long as you're doing that, you know, as long as you're working in that framework and doing this stuff, um, you're going you're gonna to do great. I just... 
you know, again, very open-ended, so a lot of different ways you can go. Um, that's why I'm really strongly suggesting that you stick to, you make sure you follow the framework so that whatever you do is, you know, you're still on the right track. Okay. Hope that helps.